Hey guys, Vincent here from the creativedojo.net. Today in this video tutorial, I want to show you guys and introduce you guys to my latest script here called the Dojo Glitch Script. It will allow you to automate and create some pretty cool glitches and transitions using this script here. So before we get started, I want to go ahead and thank the great folks over at Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. Squarespace is the only one platform that makes it fast and easy to create your own online website store portfolio. For a free trial and 10% off, head over to squarespace.com and use the promo code DOJO12 at checkout. So if you've been subscribed to the Dojo newsletter, you probably already heard of the script a few months ago, but I never really formally announced the script. You know, there's no post over it, there's no tutorials over it, and really no one really knew about it except for the uh, Dojo newsletter subscribers. And if you guys want to subscribe to the newsletter, there will be a link down below to subscribe to that. But this video here will introduce you guys to the Dojo Glitch script if you haven't already heard of it. And if you have heard of this script, um, this script has been updated to version 1.2 with a lot of fixes and some new features here. So let's go and take a look at what this script is all about here. So essentially what we're going to be doing is we're going to take a look at how to create this glitch right here. Now we're not going to be focusing on the actual title itself, but we are going to take a look at how to create this glitch using the script and how to create this kind of glitchy transition and transition from one text to another. And this will work with a lot of things and you can see the uh, versatility of this script after watching this tutorial here. So let me just go and show you some of the features of the Dojo glitch script here. So here's the script here. So the script is pretty simple when it comes to the controls. We have two options here, mirror and repeat edges and enable motion blur. And these are very straightforward controls. So let me go ahead and create a new composition just to kind of demonstrate what this thing does, you know, right out of the box here. So I'm gonna create a new composition. I'll call this demo example and I will make it 10 seconds long. And let's go and take a look at what this does here. So let me go ahead and create a new text layer. But keep in mind that this doesn't have to be a text layer. This can be pretty much any layer in After Effects here. So I'm going to type in, uh, let's see here, Glitch Effect. And uh, we'll scale this down a little bit. So here we have this Glitch Effect. And uh, if I just select this text, so as you can see here, the instructions say to select a layer first, then hit Generate Glitch. And as you can see what this does is it separates the RGB channels here. So we have a red, green, and blue channel here, you know, color coded by these labels here. And inside we have our original text layer here. And it's matted to the glitch mat, which is a fractal noise pretty much to give it a digital look, which I'll explain later in this tutorial. So essentially what we did was we pre-composed the layer and added a mat to it. And we duplicated it three times and we separated the red, green, and blue channels here. And it also created a null object for us to uh, control things with here. So in the glitch controller null, we have a few options here. We have the master glitch amount here, which controls the master glitch effect right here. We can also control the X glitch amount, so we can control the individual axes. Uh, and this can be very helpful for a lot of things here. We can also control the Y axis as well, so we control the up and down uh, glitch amount. We can also control the glitch frequency will allow us to control you know how frequent does it kind of glitch around usually 8 to 10 uh, times a second is pretty good we also have the artifact brightness here so if we just take a look at this and we go ahead and increase the artifact of brightness you can see that we start to introduce some of that distortion uh, kind of artifact in the glitch here and this kind of just creates a little bit more realism and kind of creates a more you know imperfect look for the glitch script and this is actually the the actual mat that we're using here so this is controlling the mat we also have the artifact speed or the evolution speed of the artifact so if we scrub through here you can see that the actual glitch artifact here actually moves around so this controls you know how fast the glitch artifact actually evolves over time here so and usually you don't really need to mess around with this uh, parameter here because things are happening so fast anyways but it is also here for you guys to control if you guys wish uh, you can also enable flickering so as you can see uh, these individual RGB channels here are actually flickering and because we have the flicker amount set to 85 so if you set it to zero they won't be you know flickering around so we have the flicker amount and again, you also have the flicker frequency or how frequent does the flickering occur. So these are some pretty nice options here. And right at the box, you can see that it creates kind of this glitching effect. Now, you don't have to use this as a glitching effect. You can also use this as kind of like a chromatic aberration effect. So if we just lower this down a little bit here, you can kind of create that stereo 3D look. This can be an interesting look if you want to create some kind of, uh, you know, glitchy or chromatic aberration titles or something like that. So this is a pretty cool way of just doing that. And uh, you can just control all these layers this way. But for most of the time, I usually use this as a transition kind of effect here. So, so let me show you guys how to do that real quickly. Uh, we'll be using the example here 
as kind of our guide. So essentially we're going to start with one text, glitch and transition to another text here. So just kind of give you a basic idea on how to use this in a transition way. So before we continue, let's go ahead and take a quick break and thank our sponsors over at Squarespace for making today's video possible. Squarespace is the only one platform that makes it fast and easy to create your own professional online website, store, or portfolio. They have over 20 highly customizable and professionally designed templates. With their click and drag interface, adding content is a breeze, and starting at just $8 a month you can get a free domain name if you sign up for a year. You can start your free trial of Squarespace by going to squarespace.com. And when you do decide to sign up for Squarespace, make sure you use promo code DOJO12 to get 10% off the life of your order and support the dojo. Squarespace, everything you need to create an exceptional website. Now in my project, I already have a few comps set up as my text one. So this text one here is actually uh, an instance of Element 3D uh, with some lighting and some you know shading and stuff like that. So I just pre-composed it so everything's all flat so we can use it in a clean fashion here. So I'm gonna drag uh, you know text one in here and we'll drag in text two in here as well. So you know we'll be separating this. So let's go ahead and focus on text one first. Let me just turn off this layer. So we'll focus on text one, and we want to glitch text one first. So let's go ahead and select text one, and we'll hit generate glitch. And as expected, it creates a glitch controller, and our text is now glitching. Or essentially, it's what it's doing is actually precomposing the text O one comp, applying a mat to it, and so we have this right here. Now watch what happens when I go ahead and select text O2 and apply the script one more time. So let me just go ahead and sh uh, you know shut these off. Focus on text O2 and hit generate glitch. Everything seems fine, but we now have two glitch controllers. And this one here is the second one. This is the one that we just created running the script the second time. Um, so by default, the way the script was built, and the way I intended it to be was that everything is linked to one glitch controller here. So essentially what the script does is it looks in the composition. If it sees a glitch controller null, it's going to link all the parameters and settings to this glitch controller. So essentially this original glitch controller is the master glitch controller. The second one here does nothing. So if I delete it, we don't get any error. Nothing happens because all these glitch sources here are all linked to the glitch controller because it was created first and the script looks for this layer first and then applies everything to this glitch controller. So if I go ahead and enable all the layers once again, if I change the master glitch amount, you can see that not only does it affect the first three sets, it also affects you know the second three sets that we already created just now. So essentially everything is linked to this first glitch controller. Now this is ideally what you want to use most of the time, but let's say you wanted to create two separate glitch controllers for each set here. So this is what I have originally here. So one glitch controller for these three layers here. So if you want to create multiple glitch controller null objects or controls, go ahead and rename this one here. So we'll, we'll just rename this to uh, you know original, right? And then we'll select text O2. We want to glitch this one and we'll just hit generate glitch and this time the script didn't find the glitch controller null because remember we renamed it so this time it created a new one and it linked everything to this glitch controller so now if you move the second one you can see that this second glitch controller controls the second set that we just created and uh this original glitch controller that we, that we first created controls the first set. So these are just two different ways to create uh, glitch controllers. One way actually links everything to the original and by renaming it we can actually create multiple glitch controllers per set here. So pretty much just make sure if you want to create multiple nulls, make sure to rename the null so you don't have a null object called the glitch controller. So just rename it and that should work here. So let me go ahead and undo all that. And what I actually want is for everything to be linked to one control null. So let me just go ahead and select the text O2 uh, text again. And go ahead and hit generate glitch. And then everything will link to the original glitch controller. I can delete the second one that I just created. And I'm going to go ahead and just color code these three here. So we know that this is text O1. And this is actually text O2. So let's go ahead and take a look at setting this up. So let me just focus on the first text here. 
So we want it to transition in. And then at this point here, we want to start transitioning away. So let's go ahead and set everything to zero first. So we'll set the master glitch to zero. We'll make sure that the uh, artifact brightness is to zero, as well as the flicker amount to zero. We don't want any flickering. We want it to be normal. So this is right at this point, everything is normal. We'll hit a keyframe for everything that we change here. So the artifact brightness, as well as the flicker amount. Hit you and the keyboard to show the keyframes. We'll move forward a few frames, and then we'll just go ahead and turn up the uh, master glitch here. Maybe we'll add some glitch in the X direction. Let me just move this to the side. And then maybe we can uh, increase the artifact brightness. So we can kind of see kind of distortion to make it less perfect here. And then we'll also increase the flicker amount. Something like that. We'll move forward again and we'll just reset it. So we can just copy these keyframes here and just paste it. So it's back to zero here. And make sure that we set a keyframe for the X glitch as well because we also changed that. So at this point, the X glitch is at 538. At this point, we want it to be zero. And at this point here, we want it to be zero as well. So essentially what we're doing is we're glitching and then returning back to normal here. And then at this point, this is where I want the first deck to cut off. So I'll select these three sets here and I'll just hit alter option and then the end bracket and that will just trim my first layer at this point. And then I'll select the second instance or a second group here, turn these on and I will go ahead and do the opposite. I'll hit alter option and hit the beginning bracket to trim it this way. So essentially what we have here is the first text and then the second text cutting off at this point, which is the climax of the glitch. And because everything is controlled by the master glitch controller here, both texts are being glitched at the same time. So right at this point, the second set is glitching as well. So it kind of just blends in here. So we have the first text glitching, shutting off or cutting off. And then our second set of text is actually glitching as well. And it's coming in. So we have this pretty violent, vicious transition here. So let me just go ahead and ram preview this. So as you can see, we have this pretty cool transition here. And of course you can do a lot more with it. You can add your own effects to it. Um, so that's pretty much essentially what the Dojo glitch does. It just automates the process. And I think it's very, very handy for a lot of people. And I think it's pretty handy for a lot of people who do not want to do it manually. So also one thing to notice here uh, that the uh, glitch sources here have a motion tile effect. And this is essentially what the mirror and repeat edges does here. So if you were to go out of frame, such as at this spot right here, let's say you had a shine effect or a glow effect applied to these glitch source comps here. You would see that it would get cut off here at the edges because of course these actual layers are actually moving around here. So they're actually getting cut off at the edges. The motion tile here, or this feature, the mirror and repeat edges actually turns on the motion tile and mirrors the edges so we don't see that harsh cutoff, uh, you know, in case you need it. So this is a pretty neat feature here. So that's essentially what the Dojo Glitch script does. It just automates the glitching process, just pre-comps things, adds uh, you know controller with tons of features as well as a mat to create some pretty interesting glitch looks pretty fast, pretty easy. And if you guys have any further questions or comments or maybe even feedback or requests on what you want changed in this script or what you want added into this script, leave a comment down below and I'll get to you as soon as I can. But once again guys, my name is Vincent Nguyen from the Creative Dojo and I'll see you guys next time.